So you've probably heard of particle agglomeration and that it's bad for tests of analysis, but how is it bad? And why is it happening? I'll explain everything, so stick around. Hey there, what's up? My name's Andrew Kotlar, and as lab conditions change and the list of material manufacturers must test grows longer, you may encounter times where your material agglomerates before and during testing. Since yielding accurate and repeatable results is very significant for an efficient operation, identifying and preventing particle agglomeration is a must. And W.S. Tyler is a prominent leader of the particle analysis industry with over 150 years of experience and is dedicated to helping lab technicians and managers perfect their tested analysis process. So in this video, we'll go over what particle agglomeration is, what causes particle agglomeration, how particle agglomeration affects tests of analysis results, and how to prevent particle agglomeration. When conducting particle size analysis, particle agglomeration is the clumping of the individual particles that make up your sample material. Because of most test of analysis processes rely on the use of dry, free-flowing material, particle agglomeration can hinder your ability to yield accurate and repeatable results. There's often a tendency to blame the sieve shaker or test sieves when particle agglomeration occurs. However, this is rarely the case. It's usually the material itself. Typically, when this happens, it's a sign that the particles of the sample material are moist or damp. This can either be caused by the material coming into contact with the foreign liquid or even the humidity in the room. Some particle agglomeration can also be caused by static electricity. This can be caused by the general properties of the material itself. However, the location of your lab and other outside elements like uh, the humidity often aid in the creation of static with your particles. If you experience particle agglomeration, odds are you'll have trouble gathering an accurate representation of the quality of the production line. This is because agglomerated particles will not accurately pass through the sieve stack, causing the individual sieves in the stack to hold more material than expected. Depending on the material being tested, you can sometimes evenly distribute the particles on a metal sheet and place them in an oven. This will rid the particles of any moisture, allowing any agglomeration to be broken up by the hammer tapping and oscillating motions of the Rotap sieve shaker. If you suspect your particles are agglomerating because of static electricity, it's recommended that you lightly wipe the inside edges of the frame as well as the surface of the mesh screen with a dryer sheet. Burgess clay can also be added in small quantities to prevent static. However, you'll want to make sure you weigh the sample material with the Burgess clay prior to testing the material. If the particle agglomeration is severe, it may be a good opportunity to introduce an Alpine air jet sieve to your lab. This is because the Alpine air jet sieve utilizes a vacuum system that's intended to break down and test material that often becomes agglomerated. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, fill out a contact us form so we can answer your specific questions. Just click the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn more about Woven Wire Mesh or our many products, we have a learning center filled with written and video content to make you an expert. Just click that second link and you'll be that expert in no time. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring that bell to keep up with all things WS Tyler. Once again, my name's Andrew Kotlar and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye for now.